Hey everybody. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I've got a new 3D printer. I've been 3D printing like crazy since, uh, since I've been back in business. I broke my old one. Um, and, uh, so I've been scaling up. I've been printing bigger and bigger pieces. Um, I started with some little guys, you know, some, and then some like just ruined stuff that I found on like Thingiverse mostly. And, uh, and then this, this piece is officially like the biggest 3D print that I have ever attempted. Um, this stuff is, um, this is from RM Printable Scenery. Our incredible scenery, and uh, this is um, the uh, ruined Garsley stronghold. It's a, um, it's just a massive three D print. Like uh, this, this is scaled for thirty two mil. So, like a, a thirty two mil mini mini can fit in between all of these, and like it's almost like you know, like a whole square foot <laughs> big. But what happened was is that I ran out of filament when I was printing this guy and I was 19 hours in. This is a 19 hour print, 19 hour failed 3D print. And this is most of a spool of, of filament. So uh, I was going to do a video about this, like painting this guy up. But, um, you know, as with anything, um, when you're doing a large scale piece, you probably want to do some smaller scale test pieces first. Or if it's something really expensive, you know, same thing. So, uh, so Hobby Lobby had a, a big sale on um, spray paint. <coughs> everything, uh, everything Krylon was on sale. So I just kind of stocked up. I grabbed a whole bunch of stuff that I wanted to experiment with, like different kinds of spray paints, like stone texture, um, like a sort of chalky, chalky kind of slate finish spray paint, and uh, all kinds of stuff like that. But I got some pieces that, that fit in perfectly with all of my other three, all of my other terrain stuff that I've made by hand, um, like uh, it's stuff that I 3D printed and like, you know, added texture by hand, like using like sand, like fine grit sand and stuff like that. And, and airbrush and everything, but I did this. This method is uh, is all uh, spray paint. So if you're one of those people who is resistant to buying an airbrush, I would say buy an airbrush because it's an amazing tool. But but you could do all of this using only spray paint. So uh, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll get into it. We'll we'll do some spray paint, three D print texturing. So yeah. I mean, this is the biggest 3D print that I've ever attempted. Um, like I said, like sections of this, not even like the whole thing, just like certain sections of this piece took like 19 hours to, to print or, or failed at 19 hours. So, you know, I don't want to mess up my big scale piece. So I, I started like, or also with the 3D printer, I was working up. I was working up in the scale. I was, I was doing bigger and bigger pieces. Um, but so I started out, these were some of the guys that I printed out first before I even attempted to, to print this, um, this gigantic 3D print. So this is, um, this is on Thingiverse. These are some little modular ruins. Um, awesome 3D print, you know, to have in your game arsenal. Um, they're just walls that snap together. There's, you know, different pieces, and then they have, they have a version where the um, without the clips and with the clips, and then there's there's multiple um, wall shapes, uh, including solid walls, filled in arcs, you know, open ones, and uh, so I printed out a, a few of these guys, planning to use them later, just as like freestanding stuff. And then you know without the clips, and uh, I might do some with some clips later. I'm not sure. So, but uh, I these were the guys that I was experimenting on with um, making my um, 3D texture with spray paint. So uh, yeah, so I printed up a bunch of these guys. I'll put a link in the 
uh, in the description of the video for um, for this and, and you know this guy the guy who, who made these um, get, give him kick him a few bucks if you if you print this out because it's an, it's an awesome 3d print so first off everything is going to get a coat of uh, sandable filler primer and um, so, uh, sandable filler primer just has an element in it that kind of fills in the cracks a little bit it's for um, automotive use like when you you can sand it down and then kind of fill in imperfections but uh, the thing that's new to me is um, this uh, stone kind of like crackle paint in a can um, it wasn't too too expensive you know it's a little bit more expensive than regular spray paint but uh, but what I did was I um, I went ahead and um, put some of the stone crackle stuff down and then I kind of uh, dusted it with a little bit of um, sawdust just to add a little bit of texture to that and like it already has some texture to it you know so uh, and, and then I just kind of tried to like dab at that to see what kind of effect that had and um, but yeah I mean the the combination of the three I mean the combination of the the sandable filler primer and the crackle stone texture and then the sawdust gives you a really good looking uh, stone texture. I mean it looks very very realistic like a stone. You can't tell that it's 3D printed. So after those guys are dry, um, and uh, you know I'm satisfied with the uh, texture that I've got on there, I went ahead and um, I uh, shot them with some of this um, chalky gray uh, kind of finish spray paint, and um, I you know it's interesting like it didn't dry it it dries pretty flat and like non gloss. But as far as like the chalky texture thing, I don't really know what they're talking about. Like I was expecting it to have like a blackboard kind of texture to it, but it doesn't. Um, but the thing is, is that for the rest of my terrain stuff, I've been get, kind of going for this like slate, like sandstone kind of look. Um, and uh, it fits in perfectly with that. It's like, it's basically, a Payne's Gray that dries like, it's a spray paint like Payne's Gray that dries like flat and non-gloss. So it works great. So after I have that kind of uh, chalky gray finish on there, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing that I've been doing with all of my other uh, frost gray stuff. And uh, I'm gonna hit them with some pigments just like some uh, I'm gonna use them like weathering pigments and um, the uh, the weathering pigments you know you can go crazy with them uh, you can go really heavy-handed with them because uh, for one thing if you um, hit them with like a varnish or a lacquer after you're done because you do have to do something to seal them down because they'll you know they're like dusty they'll come up uh, if you're handling them, you know, like with Cheeto dust and stuff, it'll, um, you know, you'll, you'll get, you'll contaminate them with Cheeto dust and you, so yeah, you need to do something to seal them down and protect them and stuff. Um, but, uh, the, uh, the lacquer is going to dull down the finish of the pigments and, um, also, uh, I'm going to dry brush over the top of these after I'm done doing my uh, my pigment layer. So I'm going to seal them down with some lacquer. Well, I'm, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to do the um, pigments and then I'm going to dry brush and then I'm going to seal everything with some, some dull coat lacquer to protect things from, uh, you know, Cheeto dust like when we're gaming and stuff. And, uh, and also, you know, I tried to do something a little bit different this time. Uh, with my um, so I was going from dark to light and uh, I tried to put in more shadows but I learned something kind of interesting when I was doing this um, so apparently 
when people were building castles, you know, in like the Middle Ages, um, they would use different types of stone. And then like in French, they called them the pif, the paf, and the poof. Don't ask me which is which. But the uh, basically the stronger, the, the more high iron content rich stone would be towards the base or, or like the, the outer wall area. And then the, uh, the softer stone, the, well the, the medium grade stone is, has more of a brownish tint to it. And that might be the path, the pith, the path, and the poof. Um, but the uh, the lightest stuff and the most like sandy looking, the sand, the the stone with the highest uh, sand content, would be either on the top of the castle, or it would be in the inner walls. So I was trying to get that effect. Like I was going for um, the kind of like sand look inside of the walls or on the top of the walls and and having the more dark like more blackish uh, stones towards the base towards the bottom of the piece but uh, and also with my terrain tiles my uh, my dungeon tiles they're 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 usually a little darker than the terrain pieces because I want them to stand out and look like they're getting more light. But uh, but yeah, I mean, definitely a cool experiment, and uh, and I I really like how they look. So now I'm gonna do some dry brushing over uh, over everything with actual paint, um, just to pick up those highlights and the raised edges and stuff, create another little layer of uh, detail but uh, also this is going to dull down the pigments too so yeah like when I varnish everything that's going to dull them down and then dry brushing over everything is going to dull them down too so I can I tend to go a little bit heavy-handed with the pigments just knowing that they're not going to be they're not going to look that way when I'm done so um, I'm mixing up a little bit of uh, Payne's Gray and some um, titanium buff or tit um, unbleached titanium white to get a, a nice looking uh, natural stone highlight and the, the Payne's gray has a little bit of like blues in it it has a little kind of bit of like greens in it so it has that that slate look that kind of um, uh, you know it has a, a, like a natural stone look it's, it's opposed to just like a white or like a gray, you know, or a black. And then the, um, the titanium buff is uh, just a very natural earth, a light earth tone. It's, uh, it's where they make titanium, it's, it's how they get titanium white, is they dig titanium, you know, out of the ground, which is like a whitish color, and then they bleach it out. So it's just a very natural looking pigment for stone. And, uh, and yeah, I'm just gonna dry brush on these guys. And um, I am kind of working top down. So I'll, I'll load up, I, I have a makeup brush, like a, a large uh, makeup brush that I use for terrain pieces like this. And it just has really soft bristles. It doesn't hold a lot of paint. It's more designed to hold like makeup than paint. And then I'll start at the top and I'll work my way down. So I want my highest highlights to be on the tops of these pieces and then I'm and as I work my way down the the, the highlights are going to be more and more subdued as I work more of that dry brush off of the actual brush as I get towards the base. So I want my my highlights to be intense on the tops of the pieces and then you know more and more muted the farther that I go down. So here's the arches at least with uh, with some other stuff that I've uh, well I mean all of this stuff combines to make my like frost grave table. This is this is a little a uh, tiny frost grave table that I set up, but um, the big win for me is that they go in seamlessly with everything else. And like everything else I did with airbrush, 
or I did it by hand. You know, like there's pieces that I carved by hand out of foam or whatever, and then these guys are 3D printed, but they all go together seamlessly. And by the way, you know, if you're interested, there's videos for pretty much everything on this table on my channel. But, uh, but yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm super happy that I was able to get some stuff and do it with something like spray paint, you know, which is like, you just have it in the can and you shoot it on your model and then call it good versus texturing by hand and things like that and able to get the same result. So I think that when I do switch over to my big piece, my ruined stronghold piece, I'm going to be using a, a combination of all of these things. I'm going to be using spray paint and, uh, you know, like airbrush and paint, all that stuff to make it fit in with the other stuff. But it's another tool in my, in my tool belt. But uh, yeah, anyways, um, thanks for watching and uh, take care of yourselves and uh, yeah, stay safe.